ओम शांति When I'm asked to speak, I just go into silence and after a few moments it's easy to share. But today it's not so easy. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> When mama said to you, "Janak, the world is watching you." In front of you at that moment were maybe 25 people in Pune. but today literally <laughs> the world is watching you because you've uplifted us all you've shared yourself with us you've given us baba and made us belong to baba and so truly the world is now watching you your family your friends all over the world when you came to baba and gave your life to baba You said to Baba, "You will follow in His footsteps," but today you are showing us how we can follow in those same footsteps, because you have been so accurate and made the path so clear and visible to all of us. Baba is the jeweler, but you took those jewels and, through your eyes, the love, through your heart, the generosity, through your hands, the elevated actions. have shown us how to showcase those jewels in our life you have filled our life and made it beautiful and decorated us with those jewels baba has been remembered as the comforter of hearts but you have given comfort to each one of us and you have shown what it is to give our hearts to god also so that then we can share with others god's love too When Baba sent you to England, Baba was creating the memorial of Engel Land, Angel Land, because you stepped foot on this soil to serve the whole world, so that then we could all be angels also. Baba is the Lord of the Garden, but you became the Master Gardener, who created not only a beautiful bouquet of flowers. but served us tirelessly so that then we could learn how to care for the world and transform the world and create a garden of flowers throughout the world that what more can i say you have been my mother my teacher my friend my guide baba called you janak and not only gave you liberation in life in a second but you're showing us how to liberate ourselves from all bondages so that we too can attain jivan mukti now not in the future but today in one of his letters baba wrote that you are one of the eight jewels in today's world everybody wants a guarantee not many of us have written guarantees from god <laughs> that he has it in writing <laughs> a written guarantee that this is who you are but for me that means that you are the remover of all obstacles and i know that this is what you're doing for all of us the only thing that remains for me to say is that i want to give the proof of what you have given to me what baba has given to me and i surely will do that thank you daddy when i came to knowledge when i was spiritually given birth through the thoughts of baba 
He gave me two gifts, a divine vision and divine insight, a divine intellect. And he put me on a field of service that was like being in the middle of the ocean. And I was holding my two gifts, not knowing how to use them. And I went to Daddy Janki with my two gifts. And she was sitting, and she shifted over. And she said, before you can use these two gifts, sit beside me, because this is your seat of self-respect. And then she told me, in a private moment at the UN, when you use your divine vision, look at the world as one, not as parts. And when you use your divine intellect, make sure there's love in that intellect. And never forget this. Because when you forget, you'll step down from beside me, your seat of self-respect, as my service companion. And I did step down. I did see the limitations. And then there was just an intellect without love. And then what I did, when I stepped down from beside her, I sat at her feet. And I went in front of her, but the first thing I did was to hold her hands gently, because I didn't want that finger to go like that. So I kept holding her hands. And what I saw as my bucket of weaknesses that I took in front of her when I look in her eyes, I saw moisture in her eyes of compassion, of tenderness, of gentleness. And it was as if that moisture in her eyes were becoming diamond dust that were being transferred or transposed into my eyes. And she took all my weaknesses, and she made them into a wonder. That's the power of her eyes. And when I got up, it was as if, where are those weaknesses that I went in front of her with? They are all gone. And her ability to protect our dignity by taking our weaknesses and making them into wonders is something that I value greatly with Daddy Jenki. I also cherish two other private moments with her. One was when the World Trade Center um, collapsed in New York. I happened two weeks after to go and see what had happened, and I got very close to it. And it was as if the Iron Age had crumbled it had collapsed, all the iron, all the rub, the dust, and the faces of people saying, have you seen this one? It was very, very moving. A few months after that, he was at Peace Village. And I was talking to her about transformation. And she held my hand. And her hands have got this power. When you put your hand in her hand, she elevates you. And she took me for a walk around the mini lake in Peace Village. And she said, if you want to know about transformation, you need to look at feelings. Because you just cannot transform thoughts. Transformation happens when feelings are transformed. She spoke to me about something called chit and opened inside of me a whole new world of feelings based on one's memory bank. But what she left with me was every scene we witness, every situation we face, is going to leave a feeling in us. What is the feeling you want to have left in you? And thirdly, I was with Daddy Janki in Mauritius. And she had a very, very interesting day in which she was coughing a lot.
coughing, coughing, her body is coughing. And in that evening, at night, she did something that when you were observing her, you don't know what she's doing, but you literally saw her body just got calmer and calmer and calmer. And then she went to sleep and there was no more coughing. She was so still that I told Sister Hansa, I literally had to go and make sure that daddy, you know, wasn't like really sick. So the next day I was standing by her and we were looking out of the window, the beautiful sunrise. And we were both very silent, no one was around. And I turned to her and I said, Daddy, you are such a special instrument. Baba takes such care of you. He does miracles with you. And she listened and she said, yes, Baba takes care of me. He does miracles with me. But what helps him to do that is the sincerity of my own efforts. Again, such a learning, such a lesson. And then finally, I was in, I saw Daddy just yesterday, I think it was, when she read the English Murli, walking toward the ele elevator, but no one was with her. So I decided to follow her like a shadow. And she and I were the only two people in the elevator, the lift, we call it lift, the elevator. And then we were facing one another and I said, Daddy, where's your guide? And she said, I am independent. That's how she went. <laughs> and with that, she said to me, you need to know what a big heart is. And I had never done that. I'd never put independence with a big heart. Another lesson. There are many, many reasons, Daddy, why I love you. But I particularly love your eyes because it's your eyes, whether you're laughing, whether you're warning us, or whether you're transforming us, it's got the greatest impact. But I borrow the lines of a song, you know, there are many, many reasons that I may tell you why I love you, but I think the biggest reason is your wonder. That's the bit I'm looking forward to, the hugging bit at the end. <laughs> I'd just like to bypass this and just have a little hug. Um, I was asked to just say a few words. It's a great privilege, actually, to be able to share in Daddy's celebration. Um, and they said, you've only got a few minutes. And if you would deviate, a great hook will come out and pull me off stage. So I'm. I'm I'm keeping to this, otherwise I'll be hooked. Um, and I, I, was, I thought I'd share a little bit about, um, as Ken was mentioning, a little bit about the early days in Tennyson Road. But just really thinking about, looking back on my spiritual life, it seems that Daddy has always been part of my world. At the moment of my birth, she was there. And at every turning point, every aspect, she's there. So um, it's just, a wonderful opportunity to sort of be bonded. I think we're bonded, Daddy, completely, I don't know. Um, but it's certainly the early days at Tennyson Road um, that probably made the greatest impact on my life, I think, and, and has framed every aspect, every step of my journey so far, uh, especially with Daddy and Sudesh Ben and Jenty Ben, huge um, components of my spiritual development. and. I'm just eternally grateful. 
Um, but just at that time, though, it was interesting, Tennyson Road, or I wouldn't like to call it Tension Road, but, <laughs> but it was not a particularly beautiful area when we used to travel, especially arriving at six o'clock by tube in the early morning. It was quite drab and miserable. And uh, it was a little bit of a test you know, on the journey to that particular location. Yet it was the magic of 96 and 98 that overcame everything. Um, everything about that particular little place was exciting, was powerful. It was quite amazing. Um, it was like being under the spell of a great wizard or a small wizard. And, and we, were, we were magnetized, spellbound by Daddy's electric classes. It was just incredible because we'd come from a kind of a world of confused philosophy and, and just discordant elements. And all of us were trying to make sense of our spiritual self. And suddenly there was this incredible personality that, that plonked herself right in front and started to disgorge these incredible jewels. And Daddy at that time was incredibly provocative, challenging, um, wonderfully clear, entertaining, and very amusing, as she is now, of course. And it was such a wonderful time for us all at that time. And the mornings were spent lost in the magic of the unlimited. It was, it was utterly amazing. It's just when you reflect back on it, it was an incredible experience. And then at, after that, we were off to work, and which was really an excuse for, for time to go by till we could return in the evening for more of the same. And this is all, it was just our whole world was lost in that kind of experience. It's very hard to kind of, um, to kind of describe at that time. We were just sucked into, that, into the wonder of that particular time. And it was quite interesting. I was just thinking, talking to somebody about it in the early days. It seemed to me that the students at that time used to go around with huge big books, big notebooks. And the bigger the book, the better the student you were. And you sort of like, we had these huge big things. And, um, and I'm now, Daddy would probably say, looking at one of her classes yesterday, was that the, the bigger the smile, the better the student. Would you agree, Daddy? Yeah, she probably, probably would. But to me, those early days were, um, were a kind of dream, I suppose, looking back on it, a, a very surreal experience. And it was kind of like, like being in a perfume garden. I was just trying to think of some words. And um, Sister Janji was just talking about the, the gardener. And it was, it was, it was like being in that perfume garden that was remembered in Bhakti. And of course, it is remembered, isn't it? That, when people recall these times, it's recalled like being in a garden, the fragrance of virtues and knowledge and of, of the individuals that were part of that experience. And it was in quite interesting that living and working in London at that time, yet nothing else seemed to matter, nothing else seemed to exist. It was, it was amazing, really. That, and I'm just thinking back, we were part of the incredible experience that was Baba and Daddy Jenki. It was, it was just this experience that, that held us, that locked us in. And everything that I was looking for, we were looking for, searching for, was being met and being answered. It was wonderful. And just a little bit about my own personal um, legacy that Daddy has given me personally. So much. Um, incredible, too much to say, and when, and when the more you think about it, you do start to get very emotional. And listening to Sister Janti and Sister Gayatri, your knees start to go weak, <laughs> and then you start to remember. But not I remember, but I'm a brother, and <laughs> and we don't do that, <laughs> not at all. But really, I think the first legacy Daddy has given me personally, and most of us here, is a great love for knowledge incredible appreciation of spiritual knowledge. And second, she also encouraged me to be myself. And even though there may have been pressures to, to conform or to be an archetype, yet through her wisdom, her love, she, she nurtured, encouraged me to accept myself and be who I am. And this is the person you see today as a result of Daddy Janky there. Thank you, Daddy. But Daddy was, at that time, the teacher, very much. But she was also the mother. 
And, uh, and very much, I'd like to just reiterate what Sister Jansu was saying, but I like to think now very much a friend and, and a companion on the journey. And, and thirdly, um, a third legacy that I really feel that Daddy um, has given me is really that out of the multiverse of gifts and blessings that she's constantly giving and which still stirs and moves me when, when we see it manifesting in her, in her connections and dealings with others, is that is her great and incredible regard she has for each individual soul. It, it just touches me so much when whoever it is, that soul comes in front and it's as if no other soul exists in the whole world at that time. And Daddy just gives such regard, such focus, uh, a loving tenderness to that soul. And, and then just waves and waves of respect and love and encouragement. And that soul then, of course, flies. We, we, all, we all have seen it, we've all experienced it. And a tremendous lesson, a tremendous example. And it's just like you just watch Daddy and you learn. And, well, and, and you know, I think the wonderful thing is that we're all going to do it again next cycle. I can't wait. So, thank you, Daddy. Thank you for being, and, and oh, this is the good bit. Garden of Eden, Eden. with the deer and the lion drink water, water and even. even where all the trees blossom in all four all seasons. seasons, blossom like roses that rise when the sun rays ripen. Put a full stop to this negative, no more hyphens. Climb to the top till I see horizon. Keep my mind sharp and I shine like a diamond. We're all instrumental, you players like cellos, play in this drama like actors, like heroes. 
I'm docking and diving these arrows from crossbows to picture the sweetest of mangoes on top of most beautiful meadows. It's the end of our sorrows, the end of disaster. Five elements of matter getting ready to scatter. I'm hearing the echoes of music and echoes of laughter. To tell you the truth, it was only just peace I was after. But you came to show me the most beautiful picture. You talk of a time with no religion or scripture. No history, no geography, science or maths. No fiction, you only lay down the straight facts. A time of such beauty, real masters of nature. Living in harmony, glory and splendor. And just like forgetting warm summers in the coldest December, we'll never remember the time we were goldenish members. In the storm and the thunder, how did we go under? How did we go under? How did we go under? We'll wonder, we'll wonder, we'll wonder. Will wonder. Never mind what people say. Hold your head high and turn away with all our hopes and dreams. I will believe, even though this was not for me. I won't give up. I keep. Look into Baba's eyes I will achieve all my dreams I will always believe I believe I can I believe I will I believe I know my dreams are real I believe I'll chant I believe I'll dance I believe I'll go Is there room for anything more in our hearts? I oh, know. <laughs> it's a very, very fulfilling moment for all of us. I was just thinking, looking at the audience, and as per some people, what they said, it's just uh, all of us have been nurtured and fulfilled through Daddy's classes and her drishti and her vision, even her long, long and far-sighted vision. And after this uh, dance by the Leicester group and Lucinda's song and uh, the group from London, we're going to hear a few other brief experiences. First of all, uh, Uncle Steve Narayan, who many of you may know, he was the instrument seed for service in 
in Guyana and that part of the world. And at the time he was the vice president. And he's very affectionately called by all of us as Uncle Steve. Then um, Sister Mira, who has been to Mataban in our double foreigner seasons, sees Sister Mira helping to coordinate all of our activities there and classes, and she does a fantastic job. But besides that, she's our coordinator for uh, Malaysia, and from there she does service right throughout the world. Ratan Bai, pillar of the young London Yagya, in fact, one of the main movers and shakers of what goes behind the scenes in terms of whatever we've got in front of us today. Sister Nikki, coming up in the 80s as a very, very special jewel of Baba, did incredible service, does incredible service, is now flitting back and forth between here and other places and Jordan and other points, Middle East. And of course, Brother Nick, when I came along, he was our senior brother, and he still is. And um, over the years, he's been an incredible source of inspiration to many of us. And, and now one of the pillars of the Serve Afri Africa group based in Ghana. So we're going to listen to their brief experiences with our dear, beloved Daddy G. Om Shanti. Thirty years ago, I met a spiritual lady. I think she was about 60 then. And in my conversation with her, the theme of world spiritual service kept coming up from time to time. And I was very puzzled by this great ambition because what I observed at that time was very modest accommodation, as you have heard, at Tennyson Road. Just a few sisters and brothers around and very small resources. But there was something that moved me. This sister had a to me, a mindset already made of world service, as if it is happening and will continue to happen, even though I didn't see it at the time. All I saw was the service extending from London to Guyana, but I couldn't see further than that. But this mindset, with the company of determination, we've seen over 30 years what progress World Service has made. I've heard the number 93 countries listening to this program here today. Well, we still have a little way to go to cover the entire world, but certainly this spiritual journey of this individual has gone far enough for us to say world service, spiritual service, is a reality. To me, this goal has been achieved 
And today we have before us the moving light of this spirit world, spiritual service here with us in the person of Daddy Janki. She has become, and she's known, and you've heard the terms mentioned here, of not only world server, but world mother. And I think many who have, who, who have been touched by her get the experience of this motherly feeling. I think that she's gained this position by making, when you discuss anything with her, conclusive decisions. And her decisions are always given with a great authority. And this authority, when you look at this small individual speaking to you, you feel that she is motivated whenever she speaks by the almighty authority. And she is giving through herself, her own abilities, something greater which comes from the almighty authority. To me also, when a situation is put before her, she has that ability of assessing the extent of that situation, the character of that situation, and what the position is. She therefore, when she makes this conclusive decisions, it's based on that deep spiritual thinking that motivates her. But when she puts it over, it may be sometimes a little bitter pill to swallow. When she puts it over, it's always with great compassion and great encouragement for one to move forward. Spiritual service in this organization has gone a very far way over 30 years. But there's still more to be done. And I think with Daddy Janki heading the foreign service of this organization, I think we will accomplish, if there are 200 countries, I, these countries seem to get bigger and bigger every time. I think we will accomplish it before her 100th birthday. When I first met Daddy Janki, I personally was 90% material and maybe 10% spiritual. But what she carried with her touched me and maybe a little rubbed on to me. And one of the things, because in those days, I, Daddy Janki had body problems, and I also had body problems. And one of the things that I discovered through her, through her example, was that while looking after the livelihood of the body, we must not neglect to look after the livelihood of the soul. And so, over 30 years, 
I think I've made some progress in reducing the 90% of the material things and increasing on the spiritual aspect. But I do not think a day passes by without my thinking that this is what I have to do. I have to look after the livelihood of the soul, but also the livelihood of the body, but more so the soul, because if the soul is strong, it helps the body to keep healthy. Daddy, on behalf of my own family, our spiritual journey has been, has been touched by what you, your intervention into our family. And I think on behalf of the whole Caribbean, I would like to congratulate you for the great and spiritual work you have been doing and you will continue to do. And uh, for all of us here and those who are not here, those who are looking, we will all wish you good health and future success and maybe not a hundred, but maybe even longer, if it took so long. It may not, it may end earlier. Thank you very much. This is a, a gift that came from the president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana to Daddy Janki on the occasion of her celebrating her 90th birth anniversary. Om Shanti. I was asked to choose one special virtue that has touched my heart by being in contact with Dadi Janki. And I was just thinking there are so many which one I should choose. So recollecting my past 30 years of being in this knowledge, I have chosen accuracy that has touched my heart. And I always saw Dadi as an image of accuracy. This definitely reflected that Dadi's recognition of God, the truth. And I thought before coming to knowledge, I was quite accurate in my activities. But coming into contact with Dadi, I understood the definition of accuracy in a more subtle way. Many times when I used to see Dadi and Dadi taking interest in teaching us, being accurate in little things, like for example, uh, preparing bog, keeping things accurately, or even when she comes to the classroom, if the chairs are not kept properly, 
Um, she would make sure that it is accurate, or even cutting pieces of tollies, it should be proper size, things similar, simple things like this. I used to think, why Dadi has to worry about all these? You know, why she is so fussy? Uh, not necessary, she has to pay attention to these things. But then, as I came closer and closer, and I begin to understand her bhavna, her feelings, that she wanted to teach us what Baba taught them to be accurate, which is actually the reflection of being perfection, close to perfection. And so I then begin to appreciate, even though Dadi is such a um, elevated soul, highest authority, but just like Brahma Baba, he took a lot of interest in teaching little things to them. And today, they have become a big example in front of us. In the same way, I begin to understand her bhavna, and that gave me a different understanding about accuracy. It is not just doing things physically in an accurate way, but it is very important to understand what Baba says and do it immediately. Many times, I remember by being in contact with her, I may not have done things when she told me to do it because I did not think that was so important at that time. But knowing her very closely and seeing the result of doing immediate things, I begin to uh, now understand accuracy is to understand the significance behind the words and do it immediately. And um, one thing I also remember very much that Dadi used to have uh, hujjat, loving right over me many times. And she would tell many times different things. But a couple of times I did not understand her bhavna. And so I have taken sorrow and then I thought that that was not right. But later on, uh, when I begin to look into her bhavna again, I knew that how much good wishes and how much pure feeling she has for me to teach me to do the right things. And so now I could say, I could say to Dadi that Dadi has all rights over me and she can tell me whatever she wants uh, at any time. I will definitely take it in a positive way and make it happen. And I would like to thank Dadi for all the sustenance that she has been giving to me to make me what I am today. Thank you, Dadi. Uh, Om Shanti. The uh, question we put to us was, um, what affected you from Daddy? What's uh, a quality that affected you? I couldn't think of one word to describe it, but I think the most important thing for me was um, that she sees the potential in us and also gives us the um, uh, empowerment to um, emerge that potential in ourselves. In my case, I think I didn't have potential. She manages to get, see potential even when there isn't any. So uh, that's magical. That's called magic. So um, uh, it, it just means that the whole of 
nothing can be done without this um, power that she has to see potential in us. Uh, we wouldn't have any of these centers. None of us would be doing any service anywhere. We wouldn't be um, even sitting in yoga, I don't think, um, without this vision of seeing perfection. Um, and she's also very good at tell us, telling us off when we don't come to class sometimes, and especially when it's webcast as well. But never mind. I always look to see what lesson there is to learn from that. So thanks, Daddy, for continuing. The other thing about her seeing potential in us is that it doesn't stop. It never stops. Om Shanti. was your big heart and generosity of spirit that captured me, that captured my heart many, many years ago. Your big heart and your generosity is unstoppable and unbeatable next to God. It flows and it flows and it flows and it doesn't stop and it's so enticing that we all want to dip in this big river of generous heartedness. What I love about you is what we see and everything that you are, we see. But what I love most about you is what isn't seen. It's the invisible things that you do behind the scenes when no one is looking except Baba because you are taking care of so many things and so many people in unseen, deep and subtle ways that defies most of our imagination but which is real and true and honest. And it's because of that depth of that big heartedness and love of Baba that you have been able to put God first. And what I love about you is you have drawn us into your web, if you like, of wanting to have, like what you have, the biggest love affair on the planet. <laughs> you want us to be able to love God in the way that you love God. And that's all that's in your heart. And you inspired me to want that, to truly want that big love affair with God so that God becomes your world like God is your world. And we are a witness to that, Daddy. We see it in your eyes, in the sparkle of your eyes. We see, we witness your love affair with God as your feet go running towards God. And we see it in your hands as God does his work through your hands. And we see it in your mouth in the way that you never stop speaking his words or his name. And I remember once you told us years ago, say Om Shanti 108 times. Do you remember that? <laughs> I did that practice, Daddy, on a plane. I practiced what you said, and it, it works miracles. I want to ask Sister Hansa for me if she could please count one day the number of times Daddy says the word Baba, just so that we know, and then we can do that practice. Because you must say Baba's name a thousand times a day. Thank you for all that you do that we see. And thank you especially for all that you do that we don't see. Thank you, Daddy.
Om Shanti. Before I speak, um, Daddy wants to know if everybody's eyes are open. Yes? Okay. As um, Daddy came in the morning and started speaking, first thing she said, why we have come here? And then, after two hours, Jamie replied on the mic, we have come here to celebrate Dadi and Brahma Baba. Yes? And then afterwards, Jenti Ban came in. She said, Mama told Dadi, world is watching you. And I said to Dadi, before world started watching you, I started watching you. I watched you from microphone, through microphone and telescope and microscope on the field of service, in and out of service. And, and then I analyzed everything. I fed everything in the computer and report is out now today for presentation. You'd like to know that? Yeah? Okay. What I found is that the mind, thoughts, breath, heart, heartbeats, words, dream, everywhere there's a Baba. There's a Baba all the time. Even if she wants to speak, she'll speak about Baba and about Baba's knowledge. There's nothing else in her mind. If I want to speak with her something else, Baba will be first in front of her. And that is our Dadi. She has nothing else in her mind but to be like Baba and to serve others so that they also be like Baba. That is all the time in our thoughts and in dreams. Now today, we are collected to celebrate. You have seen the celebrations in the world around, and you cannot match the celebrations that we are having today. Not anywhere, even where a prime minister or president celebrations take place. It's a special day. The vibrations that we have, you cannot match anywhere else. When we do celebrate, we do three things. One is to have zeal and enthusiasm. Like in Hindi, say, utsav, utsa. Utsav, maka matlab, utsa. That's the one thing which we have been watching since morning through entertainment and with enthusiasm that we have. The second thing Baba says, ki manana arthat banna. To celebrate is to become. To become what? To become like Baba. That's the second thing. And the third thing is vaida nibhana. Matlab means to obey the promise that you have done. Now, we are celebrating here. What for? To be like Bab Saman. Dadi's tireless service has been continuing and shall continue and is only to make us like Baba. And if we promise today to Dadi that we will become Bab Saman, half the work of Dadi will be over today. So what we shall do? Dadi is leaving tomorrow for Madhuban to meet Baba. She has taken a message from all of us. So what we say, two things. I say, 
Is it a promise? And you say, Hanji, all of you. And Dadi will take that message with her when she goes to Madhuban and tell Baba, my task is half accomplished. So I will say three times, is it a promise? And Yuhanji means yes, I do, we do. So I'm going to start now, say, is it a promise? <laughs> Loudly, it wasn't loud enough. The walls are soundproof, so don't worry. Nobody's going to hear outside. It's, I'll say, is it a promise? Daddy. Finally. Is it a promise? Daddy. That's it. Daddy, your half work is over now. <laughs> you can relax. Relax now. Daddy says all her work is finished. Daddy can retire with Baba and subtle region. Om Shanti. I'd now like to thank all the wonderful personal experiences that have been shared here by a very selected group of people here on the stage. I know that when I look at your faces, each one of you have a story to tell with your interaction and communication with Dadi. But as you know, the time, if time would permit, then we would continue for days and days and days to come and really enjoy these beautiful moments. Om, Sh Om Shanti. This morning, Dadi was saying that no one has brought a handkerchief for the tissues. And I realized that we were, when we were packing our bags, we didn't put a pack of tissues, not realizing that um, how many moments will be there where I don't know if Baba had to contain the tears. Uh, he might need a big box, not little one. <laughs> that was very moving since morning. You know, it, it some or other, I, I know Dadi for 48 years and so many reflections, thoughts, and scenes emerge. Some very interesting, some very educative, some very entertaining, some very funny ones. And uh, I just want to share two, three. One is when Dadi came to England. Uh, so for a few days, it, it took her time to adjust because there was a very little room, and we really didn't have any proper bed. Or So in this living room, there was a sofa come bed, and we, that was her bed we could offer her. And just, But then also, I didn't take her out much because I thought it's cold. She came in, I think, at month of April. And it was a few days. She said, but you don't take me out. I said, but we don't have car. We, you have to go by train, bus and then these are accelerators and things. She said, no, I want to go. But she didn't have shoes, you know, she had slippers. And I said, but your slipper will come off, you know, somewhere. Anyway, I remember that she really insisted and one time I took her in bus and then, you know, then we had to go up in accelerator. So I had to, you know, kind of lift her and I could manage, you know, you can see the contrast between her and my structure. <laughs> So I kind of, you know, lifted her and put her and she went up. And, you know, so many little things come up into these physical encounters. And, uh, but then, you know, I stayed on and like, it's, I just want to share my latest inspiration from Dadi that um, 90 years of physical journey and 70 years of spiritual journey. It's quite a long way, and 
I think my appreciation had been growing more and more, seeing her kind of prevailing around me. And that's maybe because I'm getting older too. And uh, I find that the two thoughts, very pure thoughts which Dadi has, I remind myself of those two thoughts a lot. And one is, of course, it was mentioned, but her love for God. And second is her love for service, service to God, service to humanity. And whatever she has been and has attained and what she is today really are because of these two thoughts. Because, uh, you know, all of us have experienced that to have stability of mind and to have a healthy body and a prosperous future fortune. These are three main and fourth is very, very loving relationships and Dadi has been able to accomplish all four. So when it comes to stability of mind, people use different methods and, but her methods, her, the way she had been using Baba's knowledge and Baba's love. But amazing stories are definitely about her being so well physically and um, so many of us go into so many health things you know, shouldn't eat this, should eat this, should, you know, all kinds of things. I was in Madhuban recently with her and someone said, can I have five minutes? I have a few advices to give you about Ayurvedic way. She said, thank you. Don't try to come to me again. <laughs> I know what my body needs. But I'm just sharing this because the energy, that the, this pure thought in her that I have to serve, I haven't served yet. I haven't accomplished that task which I came for and belong to God. Is really that pure energy is giving her, you know, or what she has received is really based on uh, this thought of I have to serve, I haven't completed. And she shares many times that how whenever she had been critically ill, she always told Baba this, that I haven't completed the task, I still have to serve. And when it comes to a prosperous fortune, it's definitely her generosity of heart because anytime I come to her and say, Daddy, we're getting this house, we're doing this, she has two words. It's not a big matter. It's not, it's a small thing, you know. So any time, like when you come for consultation, her answer is always so generous, like have big heart. It's not a big thing, it's going to happen. And of course, the fourth one, which is very loving and kind, kind relationships, because kindness and the care is something which is very gentle and which is, very nurturing in relationships that is if you are kind and if you are caring person and even she is very disciplined and whatever for her own self but when it comes to relationships she is very very caring and kind and I myself have experienced uh, that how in relationship her care and kindness over small things and of course the big situations whenever there is need had been really, you know, as I said, it's prevailing around me, like how many times a day I just think, but this is what Daddy say, this is what she say, this is what she does, and and which uh, I, I, I didn't think that I would want to, you know, in the sense of, because I know that there is Avyak Babdada and Avyak Babdada's presence, but I find that in my life, as I said, I'm appreciating and just to conclude, one beautiful thing is that whatever she does, there is some kind of inspiration which we all get. Whatever she thinks and says, and uh, it's not she will say keep courage, but you look at her, every step she's taking is of courage and inspiration. So it's not a question of what is being said. Of course, Lord is being spoken, but it's what is within that awareness and every step she takes. It's not a small step. Her shoe size is so little, but her step is big. 
we try to get shoes for her. You can go in all stores, difficult to find a shoe, because we tried in US a few times. But her step is so big, which has so much uh, within that step, as I said, courage, inspiration, enthusiasm, powers, and everything is really within every step. So I don't know if she knows how much I appreciate her because I don't show that much. <laughs> but I just want to really thank her that my journey for foreign service, especially with her for over 30 years, had been, you know, because of her presence. Um, it had been very, very easy, smooth, and anything I needed was provided spiritually for her being guide, guide with me. So I want to thank Daddy for everything. Om Shanti. Since morning, the feelings of love, deep appreciation, and thanks to Baba, thanks to Dadi, there are no words to say how much Dadi has given. Everything is given to Baba, of course. But how much she has given time, energy, good wishes, deep feelings for all of us. I have been with Dadi literally living since 74. What I noticed, deep as like three words, she said, no, Madhuban, ba, Murli, Madhuban, and Baba. She's a good teacher for others. But in fact, what I noticed all the time, studying for the self, notes from Madhuban, discipline for meditation, no matter how the body is sick, but she never, ever broke that discipline. I remember a scene in Tennyson Road. She had such a back pain, difficult to move, difficult to sit. But the system, that means it's just like her discipline. It is as just like Mohini Bad said, it's not a question of saying, but she demonstrates through doing it. Her heart, head, hands are in harmony. And that creates the naturally feeling that what she's doing is not only just inspiration, but it's a power for others, for all of for me. I saw in every aspect. Three words of her, tyag, renunciation, tapasya, deep meditation, and service. These are in every, every particle of her, her soul as well as in the body I see. And 
renunciation, tapasya is, is a natural tapasya for her. Not only just simple living and high thinking, but simple living. Simple living is also, but elevated living is also. <laughs> the renun in that renun renunciation, that generosity, courage from the very beginning, small, small things, there was, there was no facilities to go anywhere, but her courage it was injection of courage in us that we, we got the courage to go different places. I got the confidence that yes, Dadi will fill us with just like a, like a power is given, with words, with her drishti, with her classes, with her company, with her good wishes. In every aspect, once she said, doesn't matter what happens, I'm never ever going to give up wish good wishes. And this is what we feel that she has filled in us also good wishes for everyone. Baba has created, Baba said to her that she should create the model of a Madhuban. But what I feel, that is of course true, the model of Madhuban is created in the West. But I feel she has created the model of Golden Age as well. How many in all, all over the world, oneness, one language, one culture, one in every aspect creating this, the language of love, the language of harmony. This is what she has, what the golden age would be there, we will f we forget. How the kingdom will be ruled. But how the world is ruled with spirituality, with divinity, with purity, with dignity, this is what Dadi has created, a practical example for us. Her handling for all, just like every part of the body is very valuable and is loved, but I saw practically experience being together. For her, all of us, new or old in Gyan, well, loving for long time living or new com comers, for her it is, it is just like every particle of the body, every part of the body, if there is some pain is felt, and very important it is. For us, for this feeling for me that for her, all of us are important. And she has this given practical example of how a bouquet is created, where leaves are used, where flowers are used, where even the thorns are used, and the bushes are used. And making her everything in a worthwhile way and creating that relationship with Baba. No limitation, wherever, wherever Baba's service is. It's not a question of London. For her, London, America, Africa, Japan, or Russia. Where, wherever Baba's work is, it's Baba's work. And this oneness, what would be in the golden age, is we see her sanskaras of creating this harmony. There are no boundaries in this, and this is what this unlimited heart, unlimited just generosity, unlimited love. There's no limit for me also that I don't have, uh, I have a limitation of words of our unlimitedness. Thank you, Dadi, for sustaining us so much. <laughs> Thanks so much to both such wonderful jewels. Determination, accuracy, courage, discipline, generosity, persistence, good wishes, unlimited, tireless, all of the things that people have mentioned. Daddy has become a portrait of those, but we also should remember the artist. Who was it that made Daddy like that? 
can imagine if that is like that, imagine how the artist that made her is. So we, we, we need to show our appreciation to Daddy. And I'm going to pass the word over to Gemini to start off further signs of our appreciation. Thank you very much, Daddy. Just sitting here, looking at your faces, I'm just seeing how everyone is so alert and wide awake. And I wonder if we were to celebrate your 90th birthday and you sitting here on the stage, imagine all of us sitting here listening to your, our, everyone's experiences of your life. So it's really something that we can all think that one day there will be a day for us also to be in this position. And I really admire Dadi, that she's so wonderful and uh, so detached. Everyone is sharing their beautiful, real life, life transforming experiences and our Dadi, so detached. I don't know if I can be like her, <laughs> really, huh? Well, never know, Sister Gayatri. <laughs> Let us move on now to the next surprise, a big surprise. A little story I have to tell you. As Brahma Baba built Somnath Temple as a memorial to Shiv Baba, I wonder what Dadi's memorial for Shiv Baba is in Bhakti. Could it be the Dilwala temple, the memorial of God as the one who steals everyone's heart? This is a question for Daddy. This is a special day, a diamond day. And diamonds have had a special part to play in the history. From King Vikramaditya in Copperage to the days when Brahma Baba fashion jewelry from precious stones. We give the name of diamond to significant places like Diamond Hall, Diamond House, and what more? Anyone? A diamond stands as a symbol of all that is bright and clear. Our diamond Dadi is a gift to the world from God, who has a diamond-like life, rich, strong, multifaceted, self-sovereign, a diamond personality, receiving divine light, reflecting it outwards in a multitude of colors returning value to so many lives. A diamond future, a powerful imperial. On behalf of the global BK family, it is my pleasure to invite Murli Dada, David Goodman, Joy Chinese, Sanjay Tulsidas and Mahesh Bhai Patel to come on the stage and make a very special presentation to Dadi. This is Dadi for us.
is now Augustine. Is the nearest town you have around in this area? Okay, now we will go to visit. I thought it was kept for only one or two when you can see it. It talks a lot to me. Well, um, Daddy's giving drishti. Can I invite Brother Eric onto the stage? And Sister Mira, again, from Malaysia. Sister Mira from Spain and Sister Sigrun, who will give further gifts on this beautiful occasion. In the name of the of the family. Now this is a gift from the Americas, Sister Moini and Brother Eric are going to give to to daddy on this occasion. Again, um, there's a globe from Malaysia and a huge card. So this is a globe with an angel in front of it. Because everyone would have loved to give presents, but a few presents in the name of everyone. A Spanish family. That is in the middle of the Spanish family. So, Germany Ben, what do you think every good birthday should have? Do, do we need anything more? What do you think? A cake. Anything more? Anything better than cake? Something better than a cake? Anything better than cake? Well, what is the special present we should give Daddy, beside the promise that Ratan Bai got us to make? I think she'd be much happier than any of those presents there if we made that commitment to be ready by the end of March, as Bab Dada wanted us to have our sand scars in order. What do you think, Gemini Ben? Yes, perhaps we can give Dadi a shawl. I ah. mean, that's maybe the best gift, right, Brother Ken? No, I don't think so. Maybe the shawl will be the ideal thing to give There's a better present her. than even that. And we're going to see it in a minute. 
Can you guess? Yes. But we need the sisters and daddy to come over to this side of the stage, if that's possible. Because the present's going to appear on the screen. So we're going to have a very special gift, special, special gift now from Bab Dada. From everyone's Baba. Um, breath. Um, okay. Mera Baba. My Baba. Baba. From everyone's heart Yara Baba. to image my Baba. Mita Baba. Piara Baba. Shukriya Mita Baba. Baba Shukriya. Shukriya Baba. Thank so you, Mere Kitran. Thank you, thank you. Shukriya Bolke. But thanks, Kitran. So thank you, and we give thanks to Baba. So we have been gathered from so many different places. So we have been gathered from so many different places. Made us all into a garland that's around his neck, neck. and we should keep this garland of virtues around our neck. And so you are the star in my eyes. And so keep this garland of virtues around you, and never take this garland. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Maury.
You needed that, didn't you? Bit of exercise. Uh, Brother Neville, one of our golden greats, is going to give a vote of thanks. First things first, just finish my cake. Mm. <laughs> this is an unscheduled few words. It's um, unlike everything else in this wonderful program that's been planned so beautifully and executed so beautifully. It's really just on behalf of everyone here to offer some thanks to all of those. You've already thanked everyone who's been on the platform, but a big, big thank you to those who've worked very hard over weeks and months to make it work so beautifully. I know that Fee and Urvashi especially have been working night and day to bring it off, but the sound group, the wonderful food, the, um, the organization, everything has been absolutely marvelous. And I'm going to take this chance, actually. Uh, this is an extra unscheduled bit. I don't think a birthday can go past without singing Happy Birthday. Happy. Now, Daddy has insisted, she said, when she heard about this, I've never celebrated my birthday in my life, and I don't intend to start now. She doesn't like birthdays as such, but why don't we make this, like Rattenby said, why don't we make this the day when we have our happy birth, so it's our happy birthday, where we live happily ever after. So it's happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday dear daddy, happy birthday to me. <laughs> then we can sing it, okay? One, two, three. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to me. Thanks, Nev. Fantastic. Um, a small presentation. A big presentation from Sister Saroj Wolverhampton, who specially brought this a surprise for Dadi, a crown. Can you see that? <coughs> Dadi is the one who makes everyone into a king, and she is the emperor, and she makes everyone into king. So this is a symbolism of that. Actually, the carefree king. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks, everyone. Our time's nearly up. But special thanks to Daddy for obeying Baba's call to come to London to be the seed of so much. Thank Daddy for the love, the encouragement, the laughter, sometimes the stick. But above all, Daddy, thank you for being you. Dadi has not only been an inspiration for the BKs, but to the thousands of people she has met during her travels around the world. Whether it's young or old, rich or poor, Dadi's vision has touched them all. Thank you, Dadi, so much. But now, the day is not finished. Do you want to continue to sit here? Good, you can, okay, fine. We'll make you do that. We have Toli and gifts and then Brahma Bhojan. But let me say on behalf of everyone a big thank you to our catering team, technical, technical team, transport team, planning teams and many many more who have helped prior and during the, this day today so I'd like to thank everyone and thank you the most for being present here today and you made this day such a big 
spectacular moment for everyone. So thank you to each one of you for being present here today with us. So give yourself a big hand. Good, good, good. Wait for the last, and this is going to be the most beautiful. You've heard all descriptions of Daddy, but I bet you have never even thought of this. Brahma Baba was the biggest healer on the planet, even going back to Dwapa time. And I met him very recently at his temple in Goa. And there he is decorated with the Kashi turban of the accomplished physician. And he healed. And the one who has followed in his footsteps conquered all pain and fear and sorrow, not only of herself, but the rest of Brahmin family and the world, this healer will continue to heal throughout the rest of the Kalpa. She'll be here to the end of the Kalpa. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and making this day such a beautiful, memorable day for everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.